Welcome. My name is Brett Little. I'm the executive director here at the uh, nonprofit, the Green Home Institute. Green Home Institute has a mission to empower people to make healthier and more sustainable choices in the renovation and construction of the places we live. And we've been headquartered right in Grand Rapids uh, since 2000. We're so excited to be bringing you behind the scenes on uh, single family homes, multi-family mixed use, new construction, gut renovations uh, on our green building tours. So I hope you'll join us as we interview uh, architects, uh, builders, homeowners, developers, energy raters, and really ask them questions as to how and why uh, they are committed to uh, green building in their projects. All of our courses are approved for continuing education in GBCI, AIA, HSW, Nary Green, Certified Green Professional, Certified Green Home Professional, BPI Non-Whole House, and they may be applicable to your state-based design or contractor license. This particular course is also approved for uh, LEED Accredited Professional in Homes. And to get your continuing ed, make sure you take the quiz uh, while you watch the video or after the video and get an 80% passing rate. And don't forget you can always watch any previous videos anytime at our website and our YouTube channel. All right, well welcome everybody. I am in uh, Pembroke, Illinois here about, uh, I don't know, an hour south of Chicago? Uh, about 75 miles south. Se 75 miles south of uh, the Chicagoland region. And I'm with uh, Neil Peck, who is the uh, builder, uh, designer, and homeowner um, of this amazing home back here. So he's gonna tell us a little bit about this project today. Um, and then we're going to go in and film the whole thing and put together a, a really good video for you all to enjoy um, a little bit later. So, Neil, tell us a little bit about, uh, about your home. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, um, so I want to welcome everyone to Pembroke Sands. That's what we have named our, uh, our, um, our place here. Um, it's on 20 acres presently in uh, what is called a Black Oak Savanna, uh, which is a rare and endangered uh, ecosystem in, in northern Illinois and northern Indiana. And we've been lucky enough to uh, are able to purchase this uh, about five years ago. And, uh, and then we did the design in 2014 and then started construction in 2014 and completed the house in 2015. And with a purpose, with multiple purpose um, for the house, not only to be energy efficient, uh, but to be a country uh, house for my wife and I, and also to be a house that is welcoming uh, uh, to the community, uh, and to be uh, to be a, in a sense be part of the community here in Pembroke Township, which is a um, a rural African American community going back to the Civil War and to the Underground Railroad, and Lastly, to be um, in um, good partnership with the natural area surrounding our house. So that hopefully we've met a lot of those. Uh, it's, it was designed to be a net zero passive house. We have not quite achieved that, but we're very close. So, so welcome everyone. Great, thanks Neil. Well, um, we're excited the uh, uh, Illinois Green Alliance has put on this Green Build Home Tour. So we're gonna be heading around the Chicagoland area uh, today filming several homes. So I hope you'll stick with us. Um, but we're gonna go in and um, take some more interviews and review the house, uh, go through it in detail. And um, hopefully you'll be able to uh, take the rest of the tour uh, later on our YouTube channel. One part of uh, Green Star and Green Building programs is place or a sense of place, uh, one of the five key pillars of green. And so I see your home and what you built has a lot of connection to the land around it. Um, and so maybe you can explain um, what you did with this project to fit in with the local ecology and, and sustainable site. Sure. Um, so the house is located uh, originally in an open area when we bought the land, it was open and there had been a previous house on this site, which was no longer here. So we orientated the house east and west. Uh, we have a large overhang, eight foot overhang to handle the shading in the summer and allowing the sun in the winter. And then we extended and have planted a lot of native plants that are indigenous to this 
in, uh, ecosystem, which is a very sandy black oak uh, ecosystem, which is primarily b on sand dunes. Uh, and there's a sand dune over this way um, in front of the house. And then the, we've extended, we'll be extending the garden to the bottom of that dune, and then it'll be kind of become seamless into the landscape. Um, we do have to have fire breaks here around the house because there are wildfires and also uh, we may we will be doing a, what is called a prescription burn on the property um, uh, with the Nature Conservancy. So, uh, uh, so that is kind of give you a side orientation and also you can see if you look that way you can see a little bit of the solar collectors that are on the north side of this butterfly roof. So uh, that was a lot of the considerations for the site orientation and location of the house. We, we, we built it on initially what had already been cleared. We didn't cut any trees or any of that to, uh, to build the house, which is a consideration in Green Star. I do know that. Mm -hmm. um, when the fire break, is that a uh code thing or is that just a best practice that is a bad that's a best practice okay. actually i had a wildfire last year uh, on the north side of the house that where a neighbor uh, was burning some trash and the fire got out of control and burned the entire field north of the house and the fire our fire break stopped the fire so wow so it is a real uh threat in this area as there are a lot of wildfires in pembroke township is these black oak savannas burn readily well as the Native Americans originally burned them. Does that um, add a lot of extra cost to put those fire breaks no, in? No, they just mowed. You just mow it. Yeah, okay. And then over here I have a, uh, I have a, um, a, a walkway that'll break it. Okay, so it's kind of a walkway, part of a maintenance Correct. operation. You actually have to physically take Correct. care of it. Yeah. Yes. Okay, okay. So um, every good garden has to have a a folly, and we have one here that we built this year. Uh, we call it uh, a door to nowhere and a door to everywhere. Um, it's in the tradition of uh, English gardens that always had a folly, or which is a structure which has no particular reason and can, often can be a joke. And um, we built this this year. My, I designed it along with a carpenter of mine and we had great fun in doing it. And uh, it leads to a path going to the dune to the Black Oak Savannah. So uh, it's a connecting structure from the house and the, more, and the garden around the house to the more natural area of the Black Oak Savannah. So I'm looking at this large tank here that uh, we don't usually see in too many homes, um, rainwater collection tank. Tell us a little bit how it works, how you use it. Is it just for landscaping, for drinking? Um, it's a 2,500 gallon cistern. I've got a pump um, hooked up to it. And so that, uh, and I use it only for landscape uh, irrigation needs. Um, it's the water's coming off the roof. Mm -hmm. Well, off two thirds of the butterfly roof. One third goes to the front of the house and is, but two thirds of the roof is drained to, through this cistern. And uh, we do, obviously, because it's roof water coming off shingles, we cannot use it for drinking at all. Mm. So, but we can use it for, um, it's got a filter on it, so we can use it for landscape irrigation needs. And I use it for my uh, veggie garden also. Mm -hmm. How often, uh, the filter, do you have to change that quite often? Or? Um, no, it's just a filter to, for debris. Okay, not, okay. Yeah, it's not a... It's not a, a, a micro okay. uh, filter, it's just for debris. Does it uh, typically for the last few years meet all your water needs? For the doesn't lake? meet all of it. Okay. Um, I would say 60 to 70% wow. <coughs> in, that, in, in that area, it's hard to know exactly. Mm -hmm. um, it depends upon rain, of course. Right. Um, and this year we had a lot of rain earlier, and we, but we hardly have had any rain in the last few weeks. And yesterday I was doing some watering and, and I ran it dry. So, right. so um, um, it, um, 
so it and this is all sand the land the ground is primarily all sand so it drains very quickly so um, uh, your yard can dry out your veggies can dry out mm -hmm. qu quickly so okay and speaking I just looking at the shape of the roof and thinking of winter time um, what's going on with the snow load in winter time and does it connect to this at all not really okay. um, this tank is designed so it will freeze okay. and it doesn't um, um, it doesn't uh, hurt it at all obviously uh, we've had it's gone through several winters now okay and it has frozen up but um, mm. it doesn't um, um, doesn't seem to affect it at all I haven't had any issues at all with it okay um, this is an overflow pipe so f and we actually have as you can see the hole that's dug out from all the from the water from the overflow mm. we've we've kept the tank pretty full uh, one inch rain will fill it okay easily so um, but then and also just in the shape of the roof what does snow do to does the it snow stay there? it stays there and melts it yeah become a problem it has not and it was uh, we engineered the roof to handle uh, obviously I had a structural engineer okay. engineer the roof so that can handle any snow load yeah all right so I have raised beds for my vegetable garden and right now the tomatoes are just starting to go in I made a salad last night with the first tomatoes of the year uh, I had some cherry tomatoes and my cu cucumbers are doing well and my butternut squash is my collard greens are coming on I had arugula all spring it's kind of gone to seed now and um, uh, my peppers are not doing well this year, but you know, uh, that's what happens. So, and the broccoli, uh, I've got a lot of broccoli, but uh, something's got into it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's fun to have a vegetable garden and, uh, and also we painted them all these different colors because we like color at this place. Did you use raised beds for any specific reason? Just, just easier to get to? Just easier to get to. Um, uh, raised beds also um, keeps rabbits out. <laughs> um, yep. You don't have rabbit problems with raised beds. Um, and there are plenty of rabbits here, I can tell you that. And uh, the only problem I have is horses from my neighbor that come over sometimes and get into my garden. But uh, that's uh, so I have a lot of fun with, uh, with the veggie garden. Right. Thank you. Let's go inside. All right. Um, Neil, this is a, a beautiful open space here in your house, in your main living area. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the uh, design elements of that and then also the community aspect of your home? Sure. So when my wife, my late wife and I thought about moving down here to Pembroke Township, we had some friends that lived here. We also not only wanted a beautiful country home where we could spend spend time in but also a place where we could invite our friends family and also the com and in also the community so um and to be in because we wanted to be involved in this community which is a very uh um challenged african-american rural community and we had uh, uh, uh some friends here that we dearly love and, and it's the reason that we ended up buying this land and building this home. So in the years since we built it and finished it in 15, uh, my wife was on the Sustainable Development Planning Commission for Pembroke Township and she would have meetings here um, with 10, 15 people. Also, um, some politicians in the area wanted to build a um, immigration detention center in this community and we helped organize the fight against that um, and this room had about 50 people in it uh, at on with certain organizing meetings where we discussed and how to defeat that proposal and we were able to do that by the way so we always wanted this to be a happy house um, we love color obviously if you can see from the and, uh, and it seems to be that way. Everyone that um, comes and visits us uh, really loves this house and we seem to have a lot of great times. We've had some great parties um, and um, 
And we will continue to do that. And uh, I am uh, getting involved in the community on the Sustainable Development uh, Planning Commission also at this time. And we just had a meeting here uh, last month uh, with that. So it's a, um, so we've opened our home up to uh, our family, friends, and the community. Well, thanks for joining us, and a big thanks to uh, our volunteers, our board of directors, our members, and our sponsors who allow us to do what we do. A huge thanks to our top sponsors, T-Stud, who make um, insulated studs that help save energy and money in the walls, and Shrinergy, who have uh, microgrid solutions uh, and portable battery and solar solutions for emergency issues, for travel, uh, and for backup energy and saving energy at home. Check them out. And make sure to go to our website, greenhomeinstitute.org. Again, check out all of our videos and upcoming session and live webinar events. Thank you.